forsaken God and we have allowed as a nation the principalities and powers of darkness and evil to control the system of America known as the federal government and the local government and the state government and the churches. By and large, not all of them, but a lot of them are controlled. Too many. I get fired up about it because you know what? At least I'm passionate enough to stand up for what I believe is right. You know? And then some people, well, I'm just going to live my life, keep my mouth shut, and I ain't going to bother nobody. Well, you go ahead and do that. Go ahead. But don't get pissed off when somebody like this old redneck from South Georgia gets fired up, and I'm fighting for your right not to do nothing. I'm fighting for everybody else's right to do something or do this and do that even though it's wrong. Okay? The way the system's set up is that a small business owner will never get ahead or never win. Or a person that works for a big corporation, 96% of them never get ahead and they never win. Okay? A small businessman never gets ahead because he's taxed to debt, he has payroll, social security, all those different taxes he has. He has to buy permits. You know, he has to buy, uh, pay property tax on his business. And the tax goes on and on and on. You don't own anything. Well, in time, you're crazy. No, I, I want you to listen to me. Whether you hate my guts or whether you like me or whatever, I want you to listen to me for a minute of what I'm telling you. You do not own that vehicle. I don't care if you have the title and you've already paid the bank off. I don't care if you wrote a check. I don't care if you pay cash for it. You do not own it. If you owned it, you wouldn't have to continue to buy that friggin' sticker every year to put on it. You wouldn't have to continue to pay out of the rear end for friggin' insurance when you've never had a wreck, and if you do have a wreck, they cancel you. You don't own it. They own you. I'm just backslid. Move the kids out of here for a minute, okay? Get them out there for a minute, and I'm backslid. I told you I wasn't perfect. No, I won't do it. God restrain me. You pay that we already homeless on the continent that our fathers and our forefathers conquered that we could live free on and yet we're not free. But you'll continue to be screwed over until the taxes come to 80 and 90 percent on some people and until you pay in, into that social security that's been broke, they stole it a long time ago. By the way, it was supposed to have been a trust fund but it's always been a tax. My mother does not draw what she paid in. And by the way, pisses me off. You will not be without retribution on your shoulders when you stand before God for your money paying for that. Well, in time, it says obey government. One more time, I, I, my wife's begging me to put Romans 13 back up. The powers that be are ordained of God. And you're telling me that God ordained an American government to take your money and kill babies. I can't hang around that kind of Christian. Hey, I can hang around and run the, fall off the wagon every other week and get drunk. Better than I can hang around somebody that say they're justified by killing a baby through their money because God told them to obey a government. I'll tell you who restrains to the Holy Ghost of God through convicting you and restraining you from sending your friggin' tax money to fund abortion. That's why people hate me. It's because I don't sugarcoat for nothing. There's more money in killing than it is in living. That air preacher you know down there, come out against it and say, Stop funding it! Don't fund it! Be a man, not a mouse. Send me a video. I'll pay the postage. I'll give $25 for a $5 tape for a preacher in Georgia that'll say, don't pay another dime to them devils. Nowhere in the 66 books does it say that you got to have a license to preach the Word of God. They used to go evangelize everywhere. Jonah didn't have a license. After the government is as if it's God when it ain't. It's a bunch of corrupt friggin' men that half of them, half of them write bad checks, the other half stay drunk, and, 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 and the rest of them, they just don't give a rat's behind about serving God, but they serve another God, Molik or some other small G God, but yet you're going to bow to them, and you think by bowing to them, somehow you're going to get the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
How stupid could that be? I don't have the pretty suit on, okay? I'm not accepted to preach in the churches. But the Word of God said, God said, I won't dwell in the temple made by hands anymore, but I dwell in the hearts and the minds of a believer. What you going to do with that one? What you going to do with that? See, the church is not the building that they're building, these million dollar places they're building. To make it comfortable, to get the to get the, the temperature within two degrees of what Granny wants, or in four degrees of what this old man wants, is that he's been so daggum hateful since he was fifty. Now he's ninety-five, and he's still hateful. You better understand the word of God if you're gonna come sending me an email trying to tell me what's what. Walk into Old Baptist Church. Ten o'clock, this happens. Ten ten, this happens. Ten fifteen, the offerings took up. 1018, Sister Susie's playing a piano out of key, and somebody that uh, uh, would rather frog and sound better than them is up there to play their daggum special song every Sunday. It's repetitive over and over and over because it's controlled by a spirit of Jezebel. The Spirit of God can't go freely in that. He can't do it. Man. Because I want you to think about what I'm telling you. Because the church did their job, humbled themselves, sought the face of God, turned from their wickedness, by God. God have mercy we'd have a revival in America like never before. But you wanna do you won't do it. You gotta put your makeup on to be on TVN. You gotta wear makeup like a woman. A man wearing makeup. That's one of the most stupidest things. Well, I gotta look right for the camera, they won't come. But you're not gonna do that, see. You ain't gonna do it. Now I'm getting all riled up, see. I'm trying to cool off. And that's why the preachers hated me. Because I just turned it on, baby. Because I ain't. The reason I can preach and I can have the anointing of God on me is not got nothing to do with how good a person I am. But I'm not restrained by some bound up by some Jezebelic tradition that you call God in a denominational church that is so structured and so centered around what you want and what around a few want in that church that if God can't move, you stifled him out. You've handcuffed him. And the reason I can just turn it on like Donkey Kong, pardon the expression, is I'm not bound up by no tradition, no other preacher. I'm not bound up by a demon board. Did I say demon? I meant deacon board. I'm not bound up by none of it. Because who the sun sets free, glory of God, is free indeed, baby. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the living God. I'm feeling it now, boy. And it ain't a familiar spirit. I know what God feels like. Just like I know what the devil feels like. I served him many a year. I know them both. Listen to me out there in Georgia. Listen to me out there in Montana. Listen to me out there in England. Listen to me across this globe for a minute. He died on that cross and He shed His blood. His blood was poured out. And by the way, He died of a broken heart. Because the water and the blood, when the, when the final straw was pushed, the spear went into his side, and by the way, in the Old Testament it says not a bone will be broken that didn't break his legs. I'm getting off here a minute. Hold on. They generally break their legs to go ahead and kill them. Okay? When they can't hold themselves up by the ropes so they won't suffocate. But they shot the spear between his rib, and it was turned flat. It never broke a rib. Water and blood gushed out of his heart. He died of a broken heart for you. I fasted 21 days before I seek God. I fasted three and five days. Whatever happened to that? Jesus says some things come by fasting and praying. How many preachers are telling you to do that? Well, of course they're not going to tell you that when they got their gut hanging over their belt. They don't want to talk about that. Because uh, if they tell you to fast and, they're, and then they got a pot belly, I mean, they're a hypocrite, I guess. Let them pull the skeletons out of the closet. The difference is, is once you once you accept Jesus and repent of your sins, when they pull them skeletons out, they're not white. They're red because they're covered in the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Woo! And if they're pulling them out, it's the devil, not God. Because God said, when you repent of your sins, you get them under the blood, you cover it in Jesus' blood, you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. God said, I cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. Remember them no more. Those that are bringing them up, after you don't repent of them, they don't know your heart. They don't know when you repented up, but they gonna keep bringing it up like you ain't. You know, you know, look at her, look at him. He's crazy. You remember what he did five years ago? 